Hey, good evening, friends. It's Saturday night, live, here in the barn. Me and Oakley and Pedro's over there somewhere. We're out here doing some milking. Christmas is over. Our houses are now filled with stuff, some of which is probably already broken. And we're back to our normal post-holiday routines. 2020 is here. Most of us have made our miserable little New Year's resolutions that we merely only made because we compare ourselves to people we don't even like. Hoping we can be better. And we have no plan of action of how to actually make those life changes a uh, long-term reality because we're not willing to make a lifestyle change, just a temporary change. We use temporary words like, you know, diet and exercise. Those are temporary. Tonight I wanted to talk about the difference between presents that those children got for Christmas, which are going to depreciate in value and present no long-lasting memory, and presents, E-N-C-E. -E. The things that they will remember as an adult, a senior adult, and someday probably tell in a story. My greatest memories from childhood, times that I spent with my mom and my dad, about events. I can't remember the stuff they got me. In fact, I don't even have most of it anymore, but what I do have are the memories. And what we did on those memories, it was about their presence, E-N-C-E, -E, them being there, them giving me the eye contact. Not the stuff. My wife and I, when I, I'm a stay-at-home dad, those of you that don't know me. And a few years ago, a lot of the time of my day was spent picking up stuff in the house that the kids would get out. And what I soon realized was, hey, why do the kids need to get out this stuff? Well, it was because I wasn't paying attention to them. I was busy doing things and trying to get things ready. What I soon noticed was that when I paid attention to them, they no longer needed to suffice their need for engagement with things. They had me. And we didn't make a mess and we didn't waste time picking up stuff. We didn't break as much stuff. And the house, for the most part, was cleaner when Mama got home. Which, everything's better when Mama's happy. Hmm. And life began to get easier, slowly, subtly ridding the house of stuff. I've still tried to convince my wife of having birthday parties and the only way the people can get in the door is if they don't have a present, but rather a list of something that they can go do with the child. They've brought presents, C-N-C-E, -E, a memory, not something. Things are cool. Let's talk about technology for a second. Let's rewind in time. Hell, we'll go back to old John Henry and the steam-powered steel driver. Old John Henry was a hammer-driving man. Swung a 10-pound hammer. He could drive steel faster than anybody, and when they showed up with that steel driver, what did it do? It replaced the need for humans. It drove steel faster than John Henry. And since then, technology has always replaced the need for humans. This old milking machine here, this is technology. I'm not against all technology. What's a self-checkout? What does it do? Well, we don't need humans to run a cash register anymore. They're inefficient. They need smoke breaks and they whine when they're having a bad time at home and they come to work mad and they're hungover and whatnot. What does the cell phone do? Well, it's replaced our need to actually interact and have 
deep, meaningful, intellectual conversation with real humans. I can just interact with this device and, I, and the people that run the things on it. You are the customer when you have a device. You do realize that, right? You are not the consumer. Or yes, you are the consumer. The, the, anyway. Children, I noticed in our youth the other day, they're very anxious people. They can type 3,000 words a minute with their thumbs. But God save their souls, they cannot have an eye-to-eye -eye meaningful conversation with an adult about something like a conversation with real substance, with good thought put into it. It just doesn't happen. I tried. They can't do it. Very out of touch with reality. Reality is only what the screen shows them. And that, friends, that's scary as hell. Because whoever's running that screen makes their reality. And that's going to be the world here in a few years. Only if your children weren't raised on technology. Mine weren't. I have safeguards in my house. I'm trying to be better at managing how this thing controls me as a human. Really, I think a concealed carry license ought to be created for this thing. It's just as much of a weapon as a firearm. It needs to remain holstered unless absolutely necessary. Well, we got the thing out all the time. Could you imagine if people had their firearms out all the time? Because these are as mentally dangerous as a firearm is physically dangerous. These things are destroying marriages and relationships between adults and children. A hell of a lot worse than guns are killing people physically. Yeah. These things need to be holstered. Holster your weapon. Children want presence. They want my eye contact. When I go in that and that cell phone's out, my children, they whisper to me. I, I taught them to do this. They say, Dad, that cell phone's taking you over. And that bothers me. It bothers my wife when they say it to her. And it stirs us. It burns a little bit when they tell us that. But they're right. So we put it away. My wife and I are in the process of meeting to write a technology manifesto so that these devices don't get in the way of us showing our presence to our children. ENCE. -E. That's the stuff that's lasting and matters. Like I said in the beginning of the video, my greatest memories as a child I cannot remember hardly any of the things I received as gifts. My greatest memories are stories and memories. My dad, he's a good storyteller. He told most stories, oh, I bet we heard some of them over a hundred times. And we listened to them every time, whether we'd heard it before or not. I'm probably gonna be the same way to my children. Someday there's going to come a day where I wish I could hear one of them stories one more time. And I'll be damned if I'm going to waste that time doing something as meaningless as dicking around on Facebook. We only get one shot at this, folks. You know what I'd like nothing more if you're going to type comments? Hell, I'd like to be sitting here side by side with you in a bucket in my barn. Come see me face to face. We could have a real meaningful conversation. Of course, I like, you know, being connected with people from far away, but it's much more meaningful to see eye contact. Anyway, it's a long-winded one, I know, but I hope you guys are doing well. We'll be back on Monday. We're going to take Sunday off and spend some time with good people. In church, worshiping the Creator, the Savior. We'll see you guys on Monday. Take care now. Bye.